Hello. The learning objectives for this video on tower checks are to one, understand a more detailed version of the tower forces, two, apply advanced checks to the tower details, three, analyze if the tower forces will govern design, and four, apply engineering judgment for evaluating the tower details. Right now, we only consider the entire abutment assembly for overturning. There is nothing keeping the tower element from separating at its toe to the top tier, likewise between tiers. These elements are connected just through their center of masses being offset. In addition to an overturning check uh, of external stability, we need to evaluate the internal stability of the column itself. We do this by checking the eccentricity of the resultant loading, its flexural capacity as a cantilever beam, and its biaxial capacity as an eccentrically loaded column. Now that is a mouthful, and we'll go through each concept individually. But first, let's start with a free body diagram of the tower. We can first look at the backstay and mainspan forces at the tower in elevation view. Here, I've just drawn in the handrail forces for clarity. Remember there is a net horizontal force as a result of friction across the saddle and walkway. This force creates overturning moment as well as stress on the tower acting as a cantilever beam. So our main span force, horizontal force, minus our back span force will leave us a net horizontal force. And like I said, this both contributes to an overturning moment, as well as causing um, forces, internal forces in the reinforced column, reinforced concrete uh, column that is the tower. We also have a vertical force as well from the cable angle that will be the sum of the vertical components in the backstay and main span. The resultant of these horizontal and vertical forces causes the first of two references to eccentric loading. We will examine this with a geometric check, where we will ensure that the eccentricity of the tower saddle loading does not exceed a certain value. So the resultant of these two will cause some sort of eccentric loading on the column. In order to examine the second of two references to eccentric loading, we have to take a look at a plan view of the tower. Due to the tower offset, the vertical load causes a moment out of plane in the same direction as a moment caused by horizontal forces. We will ignore the out of plane moment for now and focus on the moment that combines with horizontal forces from the cables to check the tower as a column with biaxial loading. So our actual force is applied somewhere exaggerated around here, and this gives us a eccentricity both out of plane, as I'm calling it, and in plane. We'll ignore this out of plane eccentricity, and that will be described. Uh, why we can ignore this value is described in the future lecture. So, to summarize, we have four total checks of the tower overturning, flexural capacity as a cantilever beam, tower eccentricity, and biaxial loading, checking uh, the tower as a column. 